Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, Election Day is in our rearview mirror now. Uh, I say fortunately because uh, uh, the description I heard was I think we all got tired of the tonnage of uh, political advertisement that we saw. I think tonnage was an apt description. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, there was a special project that we were involved with uh, that were related to, uh, related to Election Day. And as I've mentioned, we have uh, our panel of experts here to help us talk about uh, this particular project. Uh, from right to left, uh, Andy Brooks with Dominion Virginia Power, Tracy Lamb with Virginia 811, Steve Lane with Virginia American Water, and Tony Goodman with Washington Gas. They and their companies each had uh, a very important role in the project, and I'm not going to go into it too much because they're going to talk about uh, this project, uh, what all happened, the end results, and some of the roles that they played. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tracy, and um, I think you'll be really excited about what we're able to do here in Virginia with the election day. Good morning. Um, as you all know, the presidential election between President Barack Obama and Governor Mitt Romney was a close race. I guess you'd like to see the lovely candidates. Um, this was a very important election, and in this program, let me first say, was initiated by Andy with the call center. Um, Virginia had 13 electoral votes that were up, and we knew that we would receive a lot of news coverage. So um, the whole point of the heightened awareness program is to ensure that the utilities around the polling places would not get damaged by third party um, <laughs> contractors. And it gave us a chance to get the dig with care message out to the contractors that are working around the polling stations and we wanted to maintain our stellar damage prevention program, and this has never been done in the nation. Okay, the process started with VUPS getting a network of participants. And then you wanna share your part? Absolutely, thanks Tracy. Um, first off, I wanna thank the call center for all this uh, attention, but at the same time, this really was a Virginia 811 initiative, and you know, these stakeholders, everybody that came together, I mean, it was, this thing couldn't have gone any better than it did, and it came together so last minute, and it really kind of proved, you know, what we're able to do as, as a state. But um, for Dominion's part, basically what we do anyway, just in our day-to-day -day operations, we prioritize, you know, have critical infrastructure, is what we call it. Um, and there's our hospitals, schools, et cetera, and, and we give those a score. Well, coming up to the election, we were doing that and giving, you know, and making sure all these polling locations that we received from the state of Virginia um, were on there, and in case the power went out, we could respond to those in a timely manner because we don't want to be the big, you know, Virginia swing state. We get this, we have these mass outages. Now every, all the polling's pretty much, you know, um, high, you know, you got fiber, you got, it's all electronic. Um, so at that point we were looking at it and somebody laid out, you know, this GPS, you know, dotted map. And, you know, I got to thinking myself and I, and I called Rick and we just started kind of talking, does this thing make sense? Is this going to work? And what they were able to do was take those GPS points and overlay all of that onto tickets, you know, we create a buffer zone and we figure out what buffer zone, um, you know, made the most sense. And at that point, we started to realize that that thing was really, there, there was something there. Um, and that's when we started to engage everybody else. And I think Tracy's got some pretty good slides, um, you know, that kind of show, you know, here, here it is exactly. All these, these dots you see, these, uh, these reddish maroon dots, I'm gonna say maroon because it's skins colors, go redskins. Um, but uh, all these, you know, you see basically these green areas, and those are what it looked like once the buffer zone was created, and then we were able to prioritize those tickets and say, you know, hey, we, you know, and I'll go into a little bit more of what Dominion did after, 
you know, my uh, counterparts here, but uh, you know, then we were able to say, hey, we can put this on a site inspection map. Start, and to start really, things started to gel at this point, I felt. And, uh, and I think Tracy's got a few more things she wants to go over and hand it over to these guys. All right, so basically what you're looking at, at on here is a blown up version of this area, Alexandria, or close to this area. The circles are the 1,000 foot buffers around the polling stations, and then the green areas are actually the excavation polygons from October 16th through November 1st. We figured those would be active dig site locations that we could do site visits on. Does anybody have any questions about the map or polling locations? I had no idea that there were so many of them. All right, um, we'll probably ask Tony to speak on some of the things that you did during your um, inspection, but basically we had a conference call, I want to say November 2nd, and we sat down on a conference call and discussed what things we needed to look for when we were doing the inspections. Um, basically we all agreed that we would ensure that the description on the ticket is accurate. They're actually working in the area that they say they're working in. We were also looking for clear evidence. Um, we also provided dig with care information, whether it was uh, excavator manuals, pamphlets, or um, company information. And would you like to go farther into what you all did? Um, oops, excuse me. <laughs> um, the way this came about, it came about pretty quick, and it was uh, very unique and challenging opportunity that, uh, that we had with this. You know, Washington Gas prides itself on uh, partnership with other utilities and excavators uh, whenever we can. Um, so that's how we looked at it. There was just short of 200 tickets that were identified, sites identified throughout Virginia. Uh, out of those tickets in the Washington Gas franchise area, there were 64. And uh, they stretched from, <clears throat> excuse me, the Potomac River and Alexandria all the way up into Winchester. And we had the unique challenge of how are we going to do this with manpower? So we were lucky enough, uh, we reached out to our business partner, UtiliQuest, and uh, said we need a little help with this. And it seemed like within hours I had a director, a manager, a supervisor, four UtiliQuest technicians came in um, to help us. Uh, we have, Andy touched on it a few minutes ago, uh, a lot of my technicians go on uh, critical facility jobs every day where somebody's digging near a transmission main or something like that. And it, we're pretty booked every day. So we reached out to the excavating community and uh, talked to the people we had jobs scheduled with. And the cooperation was wonderful. You know, can you move away from our pipe today? This is what's going on. And there was no bumps in the road. It, it freed up my technicians uh, so they could go out and make these contacts. And 64 sites is quite a bit and spread out an area like that. So um, we were able to get to each and every one. I'd al also like to congratulate, uh, you know, we had overlap in uh, Fairfax Waters area and Virginia American Waters area. And uh, Steve Lang and myself and Dan Sponagle with Fairfax Water were in touch throughout the day and into the evening on what we were finding. Um, the, the, not funny, but the, uh, interesting part is when we rolled up on some job site and an excavator was there, you know, there were some people working, sometimes they weren't there. And uh, basically the question was, you're doing what? And, uh, <laughs> and the cooperation we got from the excavating community on the job sites was pretty amazing for the most part. Um, some stopped working, uh, you know, I don't want, you know, I don't want anything to happen, I'm pulling off, I'll come back in two days. Um, some people uh, had some heightened awareness and as you said, we, we uh, verified all the marks, or freshened up marks, and handed out literature and did training on the job site. And uh, it was amazing. Like I said, it came, it came together pretty quick, and it ended up uh, to be a very enjoyable project, I think a very effective project. Um, so once again, for excavators in the room, I'd like to applaud you, the excavating community, for your help with this. Um, and it made it go smoothly. So thank you. Um, I, I, yeah, basically <laughs> ditto with what Tony just said. Um, at Virginia American, I think we had six tickets in Alexandria that we actually audited did the field. We only found one. There was some clear evidence of an unmarked utility. We spoke to the guy. We passed out the literature. We got him to call in um, for a three-hour notice. Uh, we did help 
um, Fairfax Water, like Tony said, they were they were pretty spread thin. So we picked up a few of their tickets. Same thing. The excavators were very cooperative. Once you told them what, why you were there, and that you really weren't there harassing them and, and give them a good idea why you're there, they were very cooperative. And again, thanks to the excavators. Um, we can talk about damage prevention all day long, but without your guys' help, it doesn't mean a whole lot. So again, thank you guys. Um, just to let you know, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. There were 3,800 tickets, and we used the SCC's risk-based tool, inspection tool, to downsize that to a more manageable amount of tickets, looking at the higher profile tickets. All right, Andy's gonna to touch on how they contacted the excavators for those higher profile tickets. And, and the, a big piece of this, we, we tried to do, get some folks out in the field ourselves, but these guys and a lot of people in the room did a, such a good job, we were able to concentrate our efforts on using our IVR. And our IVR basically, what we're able to do with that is, off of all these tickets that they that we identified, um, we were able to extract the phone numbers, the field contacts from each of those tickets, and then plug those numbers into the system, and that would auto And then we, you know, if we can go to the message, um, and, and I'll go back to that piece. But but this is the message basically that we that we played. Um, got on there, recorded it. We you know went over the language and. Um, you know, this went out to approximately, I think it was, how many was it, 247 total call outs, per, you know, that day. So we're get you know, the excavators getting this message. They might not be, you know, we're trying to visit as many of these sites as possible, but they're also getting that follow-up call or it's coming to their office or, you know, wherever that field contact number was going. And so we we're able to, you know, make sure we touched each of those people. If we can go back to that other slide, Tracy. I think this is the real telltale sign here is out of the 247, 211 of those were successful. That means somebody either picked up the phone or it went to a voicemail. It, it just didn't go into space and, you know, nobody ever heard it. Somebody heard 85.4% of these calls. So I, I felt like that layer, you know, obviously the field inspections are the most important thing, but being able to add this layer to that process was... Well, we it, it just kind of like we we covered every possible nook and cranny, you know, of this process. So, um, and, and we're able to get out the information, you know, very quickly. I, I think the once I initiated the call out, it took maybe an hour to call all of these folks. So um, that that was that was really you know a big piece of this. And um, you know, like I said, I, I and I think in the future. If anybody out there, you know, can think of these events, I mean, we talked to the CGA, we've talked to some other people, big events, concerts, things like that. Um, if there's ever, you know, if you are paying attention to this process and seeing how it works, if you have something um, that you think this could be utilized for, Dominion, you know, 10 out of 10 times is going to want to, you know, partner up with you and make sure, you know, if it's damage prevention related, we can use this tool. I don't care if it's in our, you know, um, service area or not you know this is about damage prevention and a lot of other people have it so um, yeah and, and like I said th this was the most successful piece from from my end and something we were really really happy to do so I think it went well all right like we said we had the polling locations provided by Dominion Virginia Power and then we had somebody in our GIS department come up with a thousand foot um, buffer around the polling places and we found that there were 3,800 tickets so what VUPS did was we sent out emails to either the homeowners or contractors that were on those tickets to let them know that they were near polling places and to please dig safely or dig with care um, there were 196 tickets that were deemed higher profile tickets based on the SEC's risk-based tool inspection tool so all of us, and there's a group that we will show later that visited these sites, and we were able to reach 187 sites and 35 municipalities. That's a lot of work for such a short plan and one or two days to do it. Um, so several of these sites received visits from multiple operators, Washington Gas, Fairfax, and Steve's group. 
Um, we also had a web-based spreadsheet called the Smartsheet. All right, these are the areas that were visited. And this is a Smartsheet, the web-based program that we had. Everybody that did site inspections would go in and add their information. So if you look at the screenshot, you can see inspection complete, yes. What time they completed it and what they found on site. So we're compiling this data now and making sure that we have all of the information and then hopefully we'll get a report together to share with those that participated. Thanks Elaine for putting that together if she's in here. Uh, this is one of the site visits in Richmond on Floyd Avenue near the uh, museum. And this is one down in the Norfolk area. And you'll notice that a lot of the traffic is being blocked by the, uh, the actual activities that are going on out there. So you had to reroute yourself to actually get, it, to, get to some of the polling locations. All right, some of the feedback we got from the excavators was basically all positive. They were like, oh, I've heard from somebody else. Oh, there was somebody out on site. I don't think we received any negative feedback from anybody. And also the utility operators that participated, it was another layer of getting the damage prevention message out and being able to perform field audits. So it was a win-win for both organizations. Um, special thanks to all of these operators that participated and I think one contractor. And I think Colonial Pipeline, although you're not up on the list, they did volunteer, they did sit in on the conference call, but there were no tickets in their area. So, any questions for the experts that are sitting to either side of me? Or Rick, you have any comments you want to add? I, I know there, there was a couple of um, circumstances that we had where we, we actually corrected things, where we had um, a clear evidence of an unknown facility. If one of you guys can, I, I think actually, uh, Tony, some of your people identified that. Yeah, I mean, we had uh, less than a, a handful of situations come up like that. And, you know, any job site, you're going to come up with one or, one or two things, you know, faded marks or something like that, or um, clear evidence. Uh, I believe on one we had a uh, gentleman was digging, and he was very cooperative once we got there, but his marks had been, uh, through moving equipment around and dirt on the pavement and things like that, his marks had been... Uh, not completely destroyed, but destroyed. But it's it's easy fix. You know, we went out and looked. Uh, uh, had my technician on site or UtilaQuest technician was marked right then, and then followed up. Um, you know, we called our locator's office and then followed up with a full ticket remark on that, not just that site. And the excavators were very cooperative, and uh, it really wasn't a problem. It was kind of something you see every day. It just happened to be associated with this project. And I think Blair, if I memory serves, you were out there and had somebody saw somebody digging within two feet of, with mechanized equipment on our facilities. So I mean, that, we were very appreciative of that. I mean, that's that's two for one right there. So. Thank you. Let me uh, reiterate some of the things that, that our panel said that uh, to me adds to the excitement of this whole thing. And uh, one of the things that Tracy mentioned too, um, we weren't the only swing state in this election, but our state was the only state doing a project like this to make sure that there wasn't some sort of issue related to excavation that caused problem for people voting on that day. So we were real excited that we were able to do this. Tony talked about the fact that uh, there was just a, a real quick time to put this all together, and he's absolutely right. We first started talking the idea uh, eight days before the election, Monday the week before. Uh, there was a very quick time frame to put this all together and to make it work 
and you, this would not have happened without the partnership of everybody who was involved, including the uh, Utiliquests and USICs of the world, too, who helped work with their clients to make some of these uh, inspections take place. So uh, the fact that we turned it around that quickly, the partnership that was there, uh, they've talked about uh, the, you know, the, the feedback that they got from the excavator community on the job site, uh, that message that was sent over the IVR, we also emailed that to all of the 3,800 tickets, and we received several calls at the call center of folks asking, wow, which one of my tickets is this? I want to make sure that we're doing things the right way and that we don't cause the problem. Overwhelmingly, everybody involved uh, thought this was a great idea and wanted to do what they could to make sure that they weren't the ones responsible for putting Virginia in the news in a bad way. And the last thing that I want to mention, Andy made reference to this. If you've got something that's going on, uh, this kind of thing, you, you th think outside the box, essentially, is what I'm getting at. Uh, all of this happened because somebody had an idea, and we at the call center had the data to put it together and make it happen. We've got data that can help you with special ticket queries. Uh, if there's a special project you're working on and you need to see how that relates to what's going on in the field, let us know. We're happy to run that type of uh, query for you and we're happy to work with you uh, whether it's using our communication tools uh, dominions volunteered their IVR uh, whatever we can to help spread the word to make this type of project uh, uh, goes successfully we're available to help too so keep that in mind we've got data to run queries uh, to help you with looking at things from different perspective whether it's damages or an effort like this to try to prevent damages so uh, again, thanks to everyone who was involved with this. Uh, it was uh, real exciting to see this come together so quickly and so successfully, too.